Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome to Daily Reflections with Chris. I'm Chris. Today we're going to read from the Daily Reflections like we do every day. And we've done this one before, but today, being that it's a different year, it might hit a little different. So let's get started. Today is May 31st. Readiness to serve. Our society, our society has concluded that it has but one high mission, to carry the AA message to those who don't know there's a way out. That's from the 1212, page 151. The light to true freedom shines bright on my fellow alcoholics as each one of us challenges the other to grow. The steps to self-improvement have small beginnings, but each step builds the ladder out of the pit of despair to new hope. Honesty becomes my tool to unfurl the chains, which bound me. A sponsor who is a caring listener can also help me to truly hear the message guiding me to freedom. I ask God for the courage to live in such a way that the fellowship may be a testimony to his faith. This mission frees me to share my gifts of wellness through a spirit of readiness to serve others. <clears throat> wow. Readiness to serve others. So I read this earlier, right, at a meeting. And what really stood out for me, or somebody else read it at a meeting, but I read it long. What stood out for me is to those who, to those who don't know there's a word way out, right? And that is like the purpose of this YouTube channel, that if somebody would hear this, if somebody would listen, even for the first six minutes, which seems to be the norm for my channel, that they would know that, man, there's like, I, I can relate to what he's saying. Man, I need some of that. Man, I want some of that. What? We can recover from alcoholism. We can recover from a hopeless state of mind. We can recover from chains and we could break cycles and we could, you know, have a spiritual life without necessarily giving in to the God that we grew up with, that tore us down, that hurt us, and, and that we could forgive the people that did things that shouldn't have been done and we can forgive ourselves for being the person that we never wanted to be right i mean if you're anything like me when i became when i got so deep in my addiction and my alcoholism man i became that person i didn't want to be i became that person i hated the most i became that person that i swore off that i would ever be as a kid right i mean when i was a kid i remember thinking like when i grow up i that i that i don't want there to be no drugs or alcohol and, and where I live, I'm not gonna do drugs, and I'm gonna do not even smoking, because I was already seeing what they were, what it was doing to my family around me, and also what it was doing to me as a child. Right, you know, I didn't. It took me a long time to realize that people who smoke pot laugh at everything, and including myself. Right, I used to do the same thing, but. Me, I'm not saying every child, I'm saying this child right here. He took it as like they were laughing at me, right? They were laughing at the things that I, the normal things that I do. And I became so ashamed that I started to deprive myself of a really good life because I, I, I didn't want to be laughed at. I didn't want to be judged. I didn't want to be called out. I mean, I, I've been creative since I was a little kid, man. When I was a kid, I remember I used to have a lot of ideas, man. You know that? Okay, I'm going to tell you something. <clears throat> Share something with you. You remember when LL Cool J used to, I don't know if you remember, but look it up. LL Cool J used to walk around. He might still, I don't, I'm not sure, with one, with one, uh, with one uh, one side of his sweatpants up and the other side down on his legs, right? It would be one leg uh, he'd roll it up or he'd pull it up to his knee, and then the other one he'd let it he'd let it go down. Well, I had that idea as a, in elementary school, and that didn't come out till I was in high school. But I had that idea in elementary school, and no, I'm sorry, it came out in middle school. So I had that I had the idea like couple years before that, before Elo Kuji started doing it. And I was like, I'll be like, look, mom, I'm gonna wear my clothes like this. She'll be like, why, that looks dumb. Why, that looks stupid. Well, she probably thought LL Cool J looked stupid too. But for me, when she told me that, it, it made me like, 
be like, oh, okay, maybe my idea is not that great. But after you do that to somebody like me a million times, it's like, I mean, more than once, it's like, man, maybe I'm not that creative. Maybe I'm not that cool. Maybe I don't have good ideas. Maybe, and my mom didn't know what she was doing. She just, she was just being my mom. She was just stating her opinion, right? Or, or probably all her friends thought I looked dumb like that, right? And they probably thought that Ella Kuje also looked dumb. But I just took it for me as like, I'm not that creative. I'm not that great. I'm not that awesome. I'm not that funny. I'm not that good of a singer. <clears throat> That's another one. Right? So, so I grew up thinking or becoming this person I didn't really like. I didn't really know. I really know, you know, I didn't know who I was even as a kid. I knew there were certain things going on with me. I knew who I was internally right like i knew my dreams and desires but who i portray to be i don't know who that person was because that person was just a result of being judged and and pushed aside and criticized so when i came into recovery and i started working this thing called a program of recovery and practicing a new way of living then and only then was i be able was i able to become the person who i really really wanted to be the person who i enjoyed being the person who i enjoyed being around the person the person who i wish more people were like i mean like absolutely i i found like-minded friends and and you know and alcoholics anonymous but still i'm still looking for that person or i'm still hoping to find that person who's who who i'm not too much for who it's not afraid of who had to be with me, who's, who, who enjoys being with this person, right? <clears throat> like, like, for more than just a weekend. Sorry, I'm getting teary. I, I got, I, you know, I have uh, more things going on in my life that, that, that I wish I was going through, right? Not not horrible things. I mean, I haven't drank today. I haven't found even found it necessary to drink. Um, but I'm, I have been praying a lot. I have been meditating a lot, and not necessarily for answers or or for or for things, circumstances to change, but so that I could learn from this, so I could grow from this, so I could um, not lose myself in this, so I don't get hurt others during this time. Right. That's really, really my main focus of my prayer and meditation right now. Plus, staying busy, like making this video, like um, working on this new group that I'm that I'm gonna be a part of. Those of you who don't know, I started a group. I help. I hate to say, I don't really like to say I started it because nobody owns groups, right? And alcoholics now is. But I'm like quarter, quarter. I'm like, let's put it. I'm coordinating the start of a new group. So right now I'm the primary member, but I'm hoping to get other members, right? And this kind of ties into the topic of carrying the message to those who don't know there's a way out, right? And helping them. Um, so in Dripping Springs, Texas, there's no Alcoholicos Anonymous, right? There's no AA group in Spanish. So. There's been a group, there was a group in 2019 and in 2020, it it didn't, it didn't, um, it still hasn't reopened since the pandemic. So they were asking around, you know, hey, do you know who can open a, a Spanish group? Do you know who can open a Spanish group? And I said, um, yeah, I said, let me look around. So. So I started asking these people around, you know, especially the guy who, who, who had opened the, the previous group. So I asked him and I, you know, I waited about nine months and they said, hey, have you found anybody who can open a group? And I've always been wanting to open my group, right? But I didn't want to step on, I didn't want to step on anybody's feet. I didn't want to do it the wrong way. I didn't want to do it selfishly, right? So then, um, you know, I asked him again and then, he says, he says, I'll call you. And he never did. I called him. He never answered. I texted him. You know, so in my, in my opinion, I felt like I had already done everything that I could do. So then I asked my sponsor, you know, hey, sponsor, like, this is what's happening. I know we've talked about it before. And I took the suggestions. What do you, I mean, how do you feel about me opening the group? And he says, I think you should. He said, I think you're the one. And I was like, what? I said, you do? He's like, yeah. 
You've been talking about opening a group. You've already given that guys plenty of opportunity to step up. They need a group. There needs to be a, a Spanish-speaking group in Dripping Springs because there is none, right? So why? Well, who cares? We care. Why do we care? Because there's people out there who are still struggling, who are suffering with alcoholism, who don't know that there's a way out. They might know what they see on TV. They might see what, know what they know on news. Maybe one of their friends had been Alcoholics Anonymous before and it didn't work for them, so they don't want to try. But there's people who have never even heard of it. There's people who have never been. So that's what we want to do. That's what I want. That's what I did. I, just like this, this channel, I'm setting out to open a new group. It's almost open. It'll be open June 4, 2023. It'll be the first meeting at noon. Everybody's invited. It's at 28900 Ranfro 12, Dripping Springs, Texas, 78620. And the name of the group is called Tercera Tradición. You might not hear of it much right now because it's not yet on where it needs to be to get the, uh, you know, the major exposure, right? It's not on our Facebook page yet and it's not on, on, uh, on the internet, but I'm working on that. Um, as a matter of fact, when I get off of here, I'm gonna call them and remind them that it should have been up already. But it's not, and that's okay, um, because it will be at, at some point. But for now, I've been, you know, going to churches, public meeting spaces that'll let me post, put something about AA in there, you know, anywhere, anywhere I could, anywhere I could do it. Uh, I'm asking them if I could do it. Next is I need to go to the sheriff's office next, and I'll probably do that this afternoon, later on. Um, <clears throat> I'm I'm working from home today. Well, no, I, I say that, but uh, probably at this moment I'm working. I'm not working right now. I'm having fun. But in a minute after this, I'll have to work from home, do a little bit of work from home, and, you know, take care of some business. And then uh, later on this evening, uh, go back out and do some more um, networking, do some more outreach, do some more uh, getting the word out that there is now going to be an an Alcoholics Anonymous group in Espanol in Dripping Springs, Texas. So that, besides this YouTube channel, that is another way for me to to carry the message, right, to those who don't know it. I don't, even if they come on paper, I don't care. I, get them in there. I just need them in the room. Once they're in the room, that's it. I mean, we could, like, let's do this. That is one of my favorite things to do is to carry the message to the newcomer right to let them know man man oof, i remember my first meeting didn't hear a word you say so guess what keep coming back and by the fourth or fifth meeting you should know if you want to stay give yourself the opportunity of course i came on paper i had to but everything that i learned in those six months it made me want to stay it made me want to want to want this life more than anything because all those all those desires and dreams that I had when I first came in, I've I've done surpassed them. I've done surpassed them, and now I'm getting to open my new group, and I'm gonna get to do other cool things. I can I feel it, and I don't know what, but I know, I know what. Um, I know that I can be used, right? I can be used to serve others, even if it's just serving them coffee, even if it's just bringing them a piece of cake, man. Those newcomers, when they come in, man, if they're like me, they're hungry and thirsty and they're probably tired. I slept through a lot of my meetings when I first got here and probably others will too. But one thing I knew that when I was in that room, I would feel so safe. I would just feel like, like I could breathe. I felt like people understood me. I felt like I was loved. I felt like I mattered. I felt like I could get something to eat there, right? Because now when I go to meetings, man, they serve all kinds of stuff, man. Sometimes I get, I go into my group and they have like pizza. Sometimes I go, they have menudo. Sometimes they have tinga. Sometimes they have pozole. Sometimes they have, um, we've had nachos. We've had um, tortas. We get, we have tacos. I mean, my, my compañeros, they just like, they're like, I'm hungry. Let's order something for everybody. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. Um, can I offer that quite yet at my group? Probably not because 
it's just me right now. Or it's me in the pasture, and and we 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 you know, we're barely getting started. But I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna do my best because I know what it's like to come in and you, you know, you've been strung out or you've been drunk for the last three weeks, and you just you need something to. You don't even know you haven't eaten, just like I did. I didn't know I hadn't eaten, and so um, you know, I would look forward to coming to meetings and drinking some coffee and eating some sweet bread. I mean, like, it was my favorite hour of the whole, of my whole day sometimes. I just wanted to get there. I couldn't wait to get there. And I don't know if everybody who gets to um, Tercera Tradición or any AA meeting will feel that way, but I hope that they do. And if you've been going to AA for, for, um, for a while and you're recovering and you're doing good. I hope that you will have the readiness to serve others as they had the readiness to serve us when we first got here. That's how we, that's how we keep this thing, right? They say um, that we got to give it away to keep it. Well, in order for us to keep our recovery, we have to give it away. And I really like the, I'm going to read this last part a little bit. I think it, it really hit me a little bit different right now than it did earlier when we read it says, I ask God for the courage to live in such a way that the fellowship may be a testimony to his favor. And before that, it talked about um, honesty, right? How honesty is a good tool to unfurl the chains, to break those chains, to help people um, out of despair. I'm like, I have to be honest to build a ladder that, so that we could, uh, so that I and, and, and hopefully others too can can come out can come out from the pit of despair and some of those pits they're deep man they are deep and for for me to 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 continue on the ladder for myself right for my own recovery man i had to be honest about a lot of things i had to be honest about am i an alcoholic i had to be honest about am i willing to ask for help and i had to be honest about um what do I believe in God or do I don't do I disbelieve or am I willing to believe and that's okay either you don't have to believe in God to stay sober but it will help a lot I mean to have a higher power right your conception of a higher power is very clear in our in our program that it's God as you understand him right you could be Methodist Presbyterian um, Catholics Christian Maybe maybe you're, you're a scientist. I mean, you can stay sober through the steps. Anybody can. It says, this mission frees me to share my gifts of wellness. When I'm being the most, when I allow God to, to come into my mind, my heart, my soul on a daily basis to... To give me not only the courage, right, but to know what part of me needs to show up at every single moment. And when I look for him, to him for guidance, I can share my gifts of wellness, right? When I'm not tuned in or tapped in or asking anybody else for guidance, I'm sharing my... <laughs> They're not gifts, man. I'm sharing my despair. I'm sharing my frustration. I'm sharing my bitterness. I'm sharing my pettiness. I'm sharing my dishonesty. I'm sharing my lust. I don't want to do that, folks. I think I I don't want to do that. It's not my thing. It's not my it's not my jam. My jam is to be to be To be my idea of what cool is, to be my idea of what a gentleman is, to be my idea of what a really cool person is to be, right? A great singer. It takes practice um, to be a great singer. I'm not that great, but I do. Once in a while, I'll, I'll sit in my car singing and really work on getting the getting the tune right because I do. I, I wanna I wanna be able to sing a song someday and not sound and. Um, not sound like I'm hauling at the moon, right? And even if I do, well, I do, but, um, but I love to sing and I love to dance and I love to write. I love to write. I love music. I love uh, festivals. I like artwork. I, love, I used to have a ton of art 
And finally, one day I said, you know what, Chris, you're just dragging out. You're just dragging it around, man. Give it away, sell it. And um, man, I, I, I sold my art and I sold it cheap, right? Just to get rid of it. But some of those pieces were, were really, really cool pieces. And there were local pieces. There are people from, uh, you know, local artists who, who, um, who contribute or who donate their art to functions for um, silent auctions. I love silent auctions. And I'll bid on them, hoping to get them. And I'll get some of them. I'll be like, whoa. And they're good. I mean, like, jams. You're talking about some really good stuff. So I had to sell that. But I do like art. And... And I like, I like, I mean, I don't know if I have to say this anymore, but I really do like telling people about this program. It saved my life. It has saved my life. It is still, it is saving my life right now. Okay. Because I get into the literature and I start finding solutions. I get on my YouTube and I start I'm sharing the message, start getting out of myself, start focusing on something different than my problems, right? And I get, not my problems, but stuff that's on my mind. And I get to go to meetings and I get to hang out with my dogs and I get to watch TV and I get to do things, right? That I never, never, never got to do when I was trying to just do it on my own, trying to control everything, try trying to um, figure it all out, right? I used to get so crazy, man. Woo! Ah, so maybe that's you today. Maybe you're trying to figure it out. Maybe you're driving yourself crazy. Maybe you're feeling powerlessness, man. Ooh, I know what that feels like. You want things to be different, but they can't, nothing, and nothing you ever do changes it. I know what that feels like. I was powerless. It's like I was powerless with alcohol, uh, from alcohol, with alcohol. I was powerless over alcohol. That's how we say it. I was powerless over alcohol, right? Once I put that drop in my body, man, I could not stop. Even when I wanted to, even when they would ask me to, even when they would beg me to, even when I would say I'd never do it again, I couldn't. I was chained, changed up, chained up by alcoholism. It had total control of me. And thank God today it doesn't. To thank God today it doesn't. I can go, I can go drink. I'm not on probation. Nobody's telling me don't drink. Nobody's saying, hey, Chris, you know, if you drink, you're going to have to leave. Nobody's telling me that. I can drink if I choose to. But man, I know what that does to me. I might forget one day, but today I know what it does to me. And you know what's really cool about this program? One of my favorite parts that I think some of us, I, I feel like, Sometimes we forget to mention uh, is that this is a one day at a time program. So maybe you're struggling. Maybe you want to quit, but you're like, man, I don't, I don't know what my life would be like if I stopped drinking forever. Well, guess what? You don't have to. It's one day at a time. That's all I have. The only reason I have over five years now is because I put a lot of those one day at a times together. Some were easy, man. Some were easy. A lot. After a while, I get easy, and but some are really, really hard, right? But I just try to remember what it was like back out there, man. It, it was hard. I was homeless. I don't know how homeless people feel, but when I was out there, it was hard. So if you are, just know you don't have to be. If you're drinking right now, just know you don't have to drink anymore if you don't want to you're doing drugs, maybe coming down, maybe you're about to go do it, just know that you don't have to. You really don't have to. You don't. And when I first heard that, I never heard that before. And I like the sound of that. That's kind of, that's that's what made me um, want to stop drinking, is that phrase right there. You never have to drink again if you don't want to. Besides all the other stuff I heard, that was the one that I, I remember reciting. Um, on, on May 31st. 
Oh my God, that's today. May 31st. I said that on May 31st, but in 2000 and, um, 2002. May 31st. Okay, I, I got to tell you the story and then, I'll, and then I'll shut it down. So on May 31st, 2002, I had already made the decision earlier in May, right? But all this stuff was happening. Mother's Day, blah, blah, blah. Birthdays, anniversaries, quinceañeras, birthday. You know, it's like, man, I can't quit. I can't quit right now. And I remember, but I knew that I wanted to quit, right? So I said, no, starting June 1st, I'm not going to drink no more. And I said, and I thought to myself, but man, it's, it'll be your mom's birthday, June 23rd. And I said, well, what better gift to give her? Like my, my, my thinking has shifted. Like, oh, what better, get, what better gift to give my mom than a sober son? Right. So my thinking had already shifted. So I remember on May 31st saying like, man, I was so excited that day. I was so excited that day because I was like, man, I'm going to go home. I'm going to buy all this beer and I'm going to get really, really drunk because on June 1st, I'm not going to drink no more. I was so excited that on June 1st, I was going to stop drinking. Right. So I get off of work and I'm like, hey, everybody go to Marty's house because we're going to party. We're going to party tonight because June 1st, I'm not going to drink no more. And they're like, all right, let's go. I don't even think they believe me, right? But anyway, we get there, right? We get there about five or six. You know, we um, we, we had bought all this beer. People were barely starting to trickle in because they were getting off of work. You know, got their cigarettes, got their got their stuff, the white stuff, right? And they got their beer, we got our beer, and it's like, okay. So I remember, it must have been like the second beer. I, I drank a beer and, and I remember, man, I feel like it was my first beer, I don't know. But it was like either my first or my second beer, right? So I have it in my hand and, uh, and, um, and I'm just, I moved, I moved myself to the, they were all in the kitchen. I don't know what they were talking about. They were probably cooking or whatever. I don't know. Everybody was in the kitchen. And I remember having my beer and walking to the living room. And uh, looking at the beer and it was all sweaty. And, and I remember even like, it was a bottle, right? So I remember even like scratching the, I used to scratch the, the, those, the wrappers, right? the Bud, Bud Light wrappers or whatever I drank, I don't remember. And so I was scratching the wrapper out. So I started scratching it out and I remember thinking like, man, I never have to drink again if I don't want to. And I started crying, I started crying and I put that beer down and I walked out. I walked out of the house and I walked all the way to my house and I think at that at that point, uh, my sister and I, we uh, we lived like five or six miles from each other. So I walked from her house to my house. And I remember people calling me. It's like, hey, what happened? Where'd you go? Are you coming back? What happened? I said, no, I'm not coming back. I said, y'all enjoy it. I'm done. They're like, what? And they're like, yeah, yeah, enjoy it. I said, I said, nah, I might go back there. I don't know. Just enjoy it, okay? And, and I'll see you tomorrow. And they're like, yeah, whatever. And, and it felt so good to start my journey. I started my, my journey of, of, you know, after making the decision to stay sober, I started uh, June 1st, 2002. So it started there. And even though I, I drank, I relapsed twice, you know, I, I relapsed two and a half years later in 2005. And then after that, I came, I got back into sobriety and then I re uh, relapsed again in 2017. So I, I had a whole, almost 12 years of, oh, I did have 12 years of sobriety before going back out again, right? But I, man, I couldn't, I can't let, I couldn't let go of what sobriety gave me. Even though I forgot what alcohol did to me, even though I still wanted to be chasing people, places and things that I thought would make me feel different or better. They could never do what what recovery has done. I did for me, so I came running back all both times. I came running back, man. I maybe maybe that's you today. Maybe you've you, you tried it and and you walked away and now you've been drinking, but you can't you can't muster up to go back, man, brother, sister, come back, 
Cause it's no big deal, man. You're not the only one who came back. There's people who come back every week. So what? Come back. Come back, man. My colleagues and I will, will not shut the door on you. It never shut the door on me. It, it doesn't roll like that, man. It's so different. It's not like people. It's like, it's a movement, man. It's a spiritual movement that saves the lives of alcoholics. Even if they go back out, come back in. No big deal, man. Come have some coffee. Come grab a piece of um, a cake. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's start over. It's okay. I got you, man. We got you. Why do I say that with such confidence? Because I know. Because they had me both times. They never judged me. They never said, oh, that dude, man, he ain't never going to freaking get it. No, they never said that. They said, come on in. They said, As a matter of fact, they clapped for me. And they said, we're so glad you're back. Welcome home. And... <laughs> Alcoholics Anonymous to this day has not failed me. People in Alcoholics Anonymous, well, yeah, I mean, we're not perfect, right? But the program itself has not failed me. When I do what it says on there, when I work the steps as it says, when I practice these principles as they are, then I do good. I do well. Spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially too even, right? So, I hope that you will find your, your tribe. Find your meeting. Find your place. They're everywhere. Now they're even in Dripping Springs. Come on, somebody. That is awesome. And find your recovery. Find your recovery. It's so important, man. Maybe all you need is therapy. Get that. Maybe all you just need a, a best friend that listen to you. Get that. Maybe you need NA or CA or SLA. Get that. Maybe you're, I don't know. Get it. If you're an alcoholic like me, go to Alcoholics Anonymous. It's the best decision I ever made. Was to not drink. To not want to drink. I have the desire to to really want a different life. And this is, what I, as a result of doing the work, and that's what I got. That's what I got. Yeah, uh, uh, recovery in itself is different. Yeah, because we, they're not gonna, we're not going to be hanging out at bars and stuff like that. But the results of recovery is what makes my life different every single day. Every time I do it, every time I practice it, every time I go, go, go. Every time I give it to others, every time I get into this YouTube channel, every anytime I go into a newcomer meeting, um, it, it it's it's healing, man. It's healing. So, folks, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, I need to go grab my dogs from the patio because I I'm sure somebody's about to yell at them because they've been barking for a minute. But that's what dogs do that's the way they communicate so what can i do right i mean i'm gonna go ask gonna be quiet here in a minute um but hey they see another dog they're just like hey look at me look at me so folks thank you for your time again and uh hopefully you, you tune in again soon okay and we'll see you bye